For Wall Street Media, this is Isabella. I'm here with Doug, and we'll help you make money in the stock market with information you can't find anywhere else. Hello there. Hello. Thank you for gracing us. Uh, we've got uh, my my hero, uh, Rich Gordon from Wachovia. Oh, he gives a rousing speech, I have to say. After he spoke, I was ready to run through the streets, shouting out, <laughs> liberty, fraternity, <laughs> equality, <laughs> everything. Oh, well. Hope was born in my heart. Oh, wait, wait, I'm supposed to behave myself today, he said. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot. I love you. French models. What are you going to do? Uh, gorgeous stuff. Uh, this guy Rich is Gordon a genius. Is hot. I'm <laughs> 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 not, not behaving myself at all, am I? All right, <laughs> 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 um, But super good stuff. Here's Rich Gordon, fixed income strategist for Wachovia. A genius, a guy with great integrity, and you should listen and watch and be glad. Hot. Each week for the past 15 years, I've looked at a number of different data sets and charts to try and determine which way different markets will move over the short and intermediate term. This weekend, a single chart seems to sum up the high level of uncertainty and challenges that remain nearly a full year after the credit markets began to unravel last July. The chart shows the KBW bank index on a logarithmic scale. Banks have lost over 50% of their value since the credit crisis began. Also, almost all of the investors who bought shares of banks this year are underwater. Bank shares are down more than 18% during June and 26% since the beginning of May. It's also notable that the index is trading lower on higher volume. The latest round of capital raising and dividend cuts is the appropriate response to the increasing stress that bank balance sheets are experiencing, but it's coming at a huge cost to the equity investors. Equities are weighing on both investor sentiment and the overall risk markets and are keeping the tone generally bearish for broad-based stock indices. As a result, the S&P lost another 3% last week. Capital for banks is clearly at a premium. In their current situation, it seems very unlikely that the credit spigot for bank loans is going to open up anytime soon. Instead, the standards will continue to increase as banks look to preserve their capital and get paid more for that which they lend out. So we're left with a very similar lending environment to the one that we had over the past year with tightening lending standards from commercial banks and financing available in the securitized markets for only the highest credit quality consumer loans. For banks, it's an issue of capital, not liquidity. The combination of rate cuts and Fed financing facilities has substantially reduced the pressures in the interbank lending markets. Since July 2007, each spike in risk aversion is peaking at progressively tighter levels, as indicated by the TED spread. However, bank CEOs are well aware of the mark-to-market destruction that the subprime crisis has wreaked on investment banks, and now they're seeing higher levels of credit impairment in their own portfolios, particularly in consumer credit. The real issue is that banks don't have a reasonable feel for the duration or ultimate severity of this downturn. As a result, they're keeping the credit spigot tighter than the Fed would like. All of the elements are in place for an extended period of sluggish economic growth as banks slowly rebuild capital and Wall Street slowly rebuilds its credibility in the eyes of investors. The efforts by banks to raise and preserve capital highlights a general reversal of the LBO theme of recent years, which saw balance sheet recapitalizations consistently benefit equity holders at the expense of debt holders. The balance sheet restructurings in the banking sector mirror a trend in corporates towards more conservative balance sheet structures. Buyouts now require more equity for lower overall leverage, better collateral, and command lower prices with more conservative cash flow assumptions. We've probably seen the lows for this cycle on loan price indices, but we have a lot less conviction that it's the same for equities. In the spread markets, the trade-off in equities and problems at banks and financials are weighing on credit spreads. Synthetic IG widened by 13 basis points last week, 
and the high vol widened by 35 basis points. Balance sheet deleveraging efforts by investment banking firms have resulted in corporate inventories shrinking by more than $85 billion so far this year, a 37% reduction. Turning to commodities, the Saudis provided a ray of hope to beleaguered consumers worldwide this weekend by agreeing to increase production by 200,000 barrels a day. They reiterated their concerns that the doubling in oil prices over the past year has been driven by technical manipulations and speculation rather than by fundamental demand. There are several things that might suggest that prices are maybe due for a minor correction rather than a major collapse. First, oil prices increased a dollar fifty on Monday, which isn't the type of response that you would expect from commodities traders suddenly faced with a torrent of additional supply. China's announcement on Thursday last week that they were reducing their domestic subsidy for petroleum products had more of an effect, causing oil to trade off three and a half percent on the day of the announcement. Second, natural gas prices have moved in lockstep with oil prices recently. Since the beginning of 2008, these two commodities have shown a correlation of 97 percent. While natural gas has always been viewed as a series of local markets, the increase in the price of energy has made the export of liquid natural gas to overseas consumers a viable option. As a result, there's been greater linkage between oil and natural gas in this bull run. These two points provide some evidence that the increase in oil prices is demand-driven rather than the product of manipulation or supply shocks. We're here every day at Wall Street Media. You can find us directly at wsmco.com. Thanks.